Hello everyone, this is Diane. I'm here to talk about Smashbooks. That's what I'm working on right now. And about a year ago, last July I believe it was, I put up a video about what is a Smashbook because I was making some at that time too. So I will try to link that below because I've had a lot of you ask what is a Smashbook. What's the difference between a Smashbook and a junk journal? and things like that. So I'll just quickly show you. The Smashbook is actually a brand name by K & Company. They don't make these anymore, I don't believe, but they were extremely popular for a while, for a few years. And so this is one of the Smashbooks. This was from, I think, their second series of them. And this one is all about food. So I bought this one on clearance. I haven't used it yet, as you can see, but I wanted to put some of my favorite recipes in there and talk about them. This is from the first series, and this was called the Pretty Pink Smash Book. And they have a craft cover that's embossed. So I colored mine in. A lot of people did that. But this is what it looked like after I used it. So I just, it's a scrapbook, really. They call it a smash book because it was supposed to be um, a departure from the big scrapbooks that everybody was doing and, and still do, I suppose, um, with the fancy layouts and, you know, everything's just so and arranged just so. This, these, you were just supposed to smash stuff in um, without having to do these well-planned layouts. So it's basically a scrapbook, but you still get to play with the fun scrapbook supplies. And I had, I really enjoyed um, playing with these. So I began making my own smash books. So here is one that I made for myself. I take old book covers, larger than the ones that I normally use for junk journals, and cover them or decorate them somehow and then put in the pages that I want to use and then start gluing stuff in. And I add pockets. Sometimes you can add your pockets, you know, after the book is all put together. And um, you, you think, well, I, I need a pocket on this page. So you just cut out something and glue it on. So that's basically what a smash book is. It's just another word for a scrapbook. <coughs> So I, I like to make them. So what I'm doing is making a set of them, a series of them. I don't know how many I'm going to make. I have quite a stack of papers and books, book covers right there that I may, I may just use all of those book covers and make smash books out of them while I'm doing this series, but we'll see how quickly I can get work done on them. So this one is almost done. Um, you saw me collage on the front and back covers of this one. And this one is a travel journal, and it was made with these pages by Amy Tangerine. If you hear pounding, it's because um, there are people giving me a new roof. So I am in my craft room today, and of course the pounding is... <coughs> I'm sorry. <coughs> my uh, craft room is on the second floor, so the roof is right above me. So They're not as noisy today. It looks like there's fewer people here. When I came home from work... There were only one or two people here. Some of them were on lunch. So there's fewer people here today, I think. But anyway, that's what the pounding is. So this is the paper I used, Amy Tangerine. It is one-sided, but it's got these really fun, bright images of a big departure from what I normally do. And some of them don't seem to have anything to do with travel, but... It seems to be a travel theme, journal, tropical maybe, and there's fun cut aparts. So there's two of each sheet, so I have enough in here to make an entire another journal just like that. So I have, um, I think I pretty much have it done, I just have to, to bind it. So I'm not going to do a flip through because I'll do that when it's done, but I want to give you an idea of um, the covers and papers that I have. Um, Alicia is the one who asked me to make her a junk journal 
so that's why I got started on this project. So Alicia, um, I would like you to take a look at the covers and the papers that I'm going to show and if you can select one um, before I have them done that would be great and if you want to wait till they're done that's okay too. But a couple of other people have said they're interested and I'd like people to be able to know which ones would be available. So this one is a travel one, like I said, and here we are mid-July almost, and so I hope it's not too late to um, put a travel journal up for sale, but it's bright and tropical looking. There are pockets, there's lots of space for you to glue your own things in, um, so this is going to be a really fun journal, plus the cut aparts that don't end up going in pockets will be a part of the package and the cut off pieces of the paper. So you get a lot to play with when you get this journal or any of the journals. So let me show you what else will be available. This is a really tall cover, but I loved this cover with all the shoes on it. <clears throat> this measures just a bit over 12 inches tall and uh, nine inches wide. So this is going to be a big journal. And I didn't have a, um, I didn't pick out a stack, a paper stack for this. It is a variety, so it'll have these um, six by nine pieces, six by eight pieces, and they're double sided. Um, this one will probably get cut into strips. And these will be cut and um, I'll make something with those. Then we have the, the colors that I thought looked nice with those shoes. So these are papers, mostly papers that I got um, at the flea market that I went to with my friend over the winter. And I got a whole bunch of scrapbooking papers. So some of these are double sided. So I love this one with these colors. And this one is double-sided. Here's a piece of craft paper, but I thought those daisies were fun. There's this one. So these are kind of funky papers. These happen to be basic gray. They come from different collections. You don't have to see all of them. There's some butterflies there. I just want to give you an idea of the kind of the style of each book. So you get the idea here. So there's the shoe one. Look at that one. So we have the shoe chunk of smash book. And some of the covers will be covered. This one will, I'm going to leave it because of course I have to that's too cool to not use. This book I will cover. So it is uh, seven and a half by just a little over ten, almost ten and a half. And I don't know what I'll call this one, but it's a, this one has some planes. This is, these are some more basic gray. So if you like this pack, this set of papers, you can just call it the walking book, because that's not what it will end up being, but again, we have um, travel tag, luggage tags here, but I don't really want to make this a travel themed book, because I just did one, unless someone wants it to be a travel themed book. There's some globes there, a bicycle, there's a map, some stamps. So this one has a more uh, neutral color palette. Um, not, I wouldn't call it grungy, but this is just from an old paper pad that I had. And again, this one is from an old pad that I've had for a long time. So the walking book has more neutral colors and some greens, some other colors too green, orange. Then we have this one, Mrs. Sharp's Traditions. I don't know if I'm going to cover this one or keep it this way. 
but again we have these this size of paper double-sided and this one has some pretty colors so this is a peach color so we have some peaches and greens in this paper basic gray again I got a lot of basic gray papers from all different collections at that flea market this is one of my favorite paper pads paper stacks and I have a few random sheets and I just love this paper pad this basic gray this is another paper pad that I have a few sheets left over from so this one is fun and cheery a lot of it is double sided the travel one that I just did, um, they all the papers are single sided. There are a few single sided sheets in here, but a lot of it is double sided. There's more pages here. You didn't see them all, but that's Mrs. Sharp's Traditions. So how many is that? One, two, three, four. This one is from a children's book, and I just like the color. The Eiffel Tower is wilting, but I'm going to cover that. But I do like this, col this color. So we're just going to call this the Burgundy Book. lot of colors in it but there is I, I chose this paper um, stack because there's a lot of burgundy in that paper stack this particular one but it's not all burgundy it's, it's a lot of colors about 25 sheets in a book. I think the travel one has 28 sheets um, plus some envelopes that are added in there. So it doesn't sound like a lot but this book here had about 25 sheets and then when you fill it up it's pretty thick. So I don't like to have more than that in them. This one I will leave as it is. So this is the Fern book. I had gotten a pad of paper on clearance at Michael's that was um, kind of like a botanical and it had ferns. So I pulled out some of those pages and it's this size of paper, but it's just right. I'll have to trim it just a little bit for this book. It's eight and a half by 11 paper. So this one has, I can cut that apart. And this one has some cut parts. Looks like I put all the cut apart and it's upside down in the front. So there's a lot of beautiful cut aparts here. And part of this this uh, this pad of paper had some slightly textured um, solid colors in the back, so I will include some of those also. And I have some random sheets that I had in my stash. Some are double-sided. Now these are the papers that came in that pad that I was talking about. So there's ferns, perfect. This is 
just a beautiful paper pad. So that's ferns. One, two, three, four, five, six. Looks like I'm making six smash books. So um, you can message me here on this video or on my Etsy, and I will link my Etsy below. Uh, if you're interested in any of those. And Alicia gets first pick, like I said. And then there were two others that expressed interest. So those two can pick what they want first. Those three people can pick what they want. Now, I'm going to go ahead and start binding this. So here's my bind it all. This is what I use to bind my smash books. And... This little booklet helps me know how to punch the holes in whatever size book I'm using. So this cover is 11 inches tall, so that's a pretty tall one also. So I look in my booklet for where it says for a 10, 11 inch cover right there. I need to punch 20 holes. But what I look for is after I punch the first set of holes, then I move my um, guide to the fifth hole and punch again and then to the 11th hole and then to the 13th hole so I have to punch four times because it's such a large long cover some people would punch and have two sets of rings one here and one here or something like that instead of using a hole I don't really know how to line that up properly so I always just do the whole thing so uh, this is not going to be a tutorial on how to use a bind at all. I'm just going to go ahead and start punching. I have it set for the, the cover and I'm going to slide this into the slot and make sure I don't let it um, tip a little bit because I've done that and then the holes run right off the edge of the paper, of the cover or the paper. So I hold it straight and stand up to get leverage and pull the lever down and it punches the holes. So there's a guide here on this little slot that will fit right into these holes. So I'm gonna move it and fit it, what does it say? Into the fifth hole, into this hole here. If I put it into this hole and punched, it would leave a gap right there. So don't do that. So I'll put it in the fifth hole and punch again. And then it says the eleventh hole. And the thirteenth hole. So I'm just going to move it two slots. Now I have the holes punched into my cover. I will do the back cover. So it's going to be this way. So I want the holes to be lined up just exactly the same. So this is how it went in. So this back cover is going to go in just like that too. Now that I have the cover punched, I'm going to open this little slot and dump out all the little pieces that got punched before I start punching the paper. So again, the paper will go in so that it will match the cover. And I do about five pages at a time, unless the paper's really thin and then I might do more. I take out all the inserts because I have punched it where these slid down and got punched. 
got holes punched in them if I forget to take things out. So one, two, three, four, five. Again, I have to make sure that I don't let this tip at all. And I'm going to punch the exact same way that I did the covers because they have to line up. back in before I forget where they go. Not that it matters because you can move them around any old way you want to. Whoever buys this. One, I have a piece of acetate here. I'm going to punch that separately because it's not the same size. So I, I want it, there's a little groove right here. I'm going to put the edge of this paper right next to that groove and that way I can put this anywhere in the page. I can move it up or down. If I, if I put it way at the end like I do with the beginning of the papers, then it would have to be at the bottom. All those holes are punched. I just want to remember where it goes in this. So there's one, two. There's another page I'm going to punch separately. Three, four, five. I have tried punching the shorter pages right along with these, but it doesn't work out sometimes just because they, they slip and they don't get punched right. This went in here. This goes in here. is uh, two cards that I sewed together to form a pocket. I'm just going to punch right along that edge. So you see I sewed around this edge and this edge, but I don't need to sew here because this will be bound in. made an envelope out of wallpaper and I'm going to bind that in. And that will have some things in it. One two, three, four, five.
two, three, four, five. That won't slide out of the pocket, so I can leave it in. This page is shorter, but I have it centered. <laughs> it's not... Oh, sorry. It's not quite as much of a size difference, so I include that right in it. This isn't getting too boring watching and listening to me doing all this punching. But in just a moment, you'll see me put the wires in. Um, maybe you just watched Gail's series on her um, cinch journals. So it's the same sort of machine, and it punches round holes instead of rectangular ones. But it uses the same wires. That was a big thump. I felt that one. And I'm doing them in groups of five, and I have 28 pages in this book, so I just have three left. this envelope that I decorated. Didn't have as much time for crafting as I was hoping for today. I worked and then I got groceries and then my daughter and her husband are both off today and they brought his younger brother over to mow my lawn because he doesn't drive yet but he has a lawn mowing business he bought himself a little uh, little mower but he uses my mower when he comes here so I hung out with them and talked with them while he was mowing it's a hot day here today it's about 90 so I feel bad for the people on my roof they're getting paid good though I paid Justin's brother for mowing. So anyway, I have to stop pretty soon because I have other stuff I need to do, like make dinner. Alright, so now I have all the pages punched. And this is how the book will be assembled. Front cover, oh, pages, and back cover. Now, in order to find it, in order to have the ends of the wires where I want them, which is inside the book and not outside, I take the back cover and flip it around like that. And this is how I will put the wires in. So I have silver, black, and white. I'm using silver for this one. So this is what the, the wire looks like. And I punched 20 holes. And this is probably 24. Some of them, one of the colors that I have is a little shorter. I think the, uh, that one is only 20. But I want to cut off four of these sets of wire. So now I have this piece of wire there that's going to end up on the inside of the book and not the outside. So I take my wire and 
there's a wide end and a skinny end. The skinny end is what these holes, what will fit into the holes. So I just put that on there like that. And then I take the front cover and put that on. And then I go page by page. You can do groups of pages, but since I have some smaller items, I do it one page at a time just to make sure I have everything right where I want it. Just a hole there. Must be I put it in the sixth hole instead of the fifth. So I ended up with a gap. As you can see, probably I did some stamping and washi tape and stuff on the white sides of some of them. I'm going to take these out just because of the seam binding. I don't want them to get caught in the binding stuff. I bought my bind it, all, bind it All by searching online, but I bought it quite a few years ago. And I ended up getting it right from the Zutter company that makes it. But you might be able to get it from Amazon now, I don't know. Okay, now, there it is in the wire. So now, how do we close the wire? We use the Zutter Bind It All for that, too. There is a slight indentation right there at the top of the wire. So I make sure that the book pages and cover are resting near that indentation. This is a one inch wire. So there's a guide here that shows how to, where to set it for one inch. It's kind of wearing off, but I also have these things, and I, I use this just to double check. So this one says one inch, so I put it in here. It needs to fit in there snugly, but so that you can still take it out. So that's set just perfectly right there. Pretty much all I use is the one inch. I want, once in a while I use smaller wires, but usually it's one inch. So, I'm going to set these wires down into that channel. And I'm going to stand up so I can do this properly. You don't want to end up with just two sets of wires left by themselves. So, I'm going to... And you don't want to have half a wire in where it will be squeezed and the other half sticking out. So if you could see what I was doing, you'd know what I'm talking about. But like I said, this isn't supposed to be a tutorial. Okay, so I just squeezed the handle and it pushed those closed. Now I'm going to move it down. And I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight wires left. So I'm gonna do four at a time. 
Now all the wires are closed. So this is the part I'm talking about with the end of the wire. You want that inside the book instead of outside. So now when I close the book, that is inside. And there we have it. That is a smash book, all completed. I'm going to add some things to the pockets because I have all these cut aparts and scraps. So I'll be putting things in the pockets and then putting the rest of it into the large envelopes that are bound right in. Put some in here and some in the wallpaper one. And uh, this journal will be done. Thank you for watching and hopefully I'll have time to start on the next one tomorrow. I think I'm going to do the fern one next because I love that one. All right, I'm going to get going on my other things that I must do this evening and I will see you again hopefully tomorrow. Bye-bye.